All right, welcome to Tony Hawk 3 on the original Xbox. We're going to be taking a look at the exclusive oil rig level. So what happened with this is that uh, Tony Hawk 2X actually launched with the Xbox, but at that time, Tony Hawk 3 was already out on the PS2. But to make up for the fact that it came out so late, uh, they put out this exclusive level, the oil rig. And so this is the only place to get it. Um, it's pretty cool, but I think that they kind of blew it with not um, making goals for it. I thought that was kind of weird because you can see all the effort they put into it. There's gaps, there's, you know, all the textures and the assets and all that stuff that they had to make, but they didn't bother to put goals in it. They didn't put skate, they didn't, you know, nothing like that. And I think that would have been a really good move. But the Xbox version um, for this whole era of Tony Hawk games is usually better. Uh, in this case, you know, it looks a little bit better, not by a whole lot, and you get this exclusive level, which is nice, not really a big deal. Uh, but the other games, there's usually a bit more, like Tony Hawk 4 is actually in 720p, um, which is a huge step up from the 480i of the PS2 version. This is only in 480p, which again is better. Uh, this is definitely the version to get if you have the choice, but uh, it's just not as big of a deal. It's kind of weird. Uh, Tony Hawk 3 is actually the worst looking Tony Hawk game on the Xbox because um, Tony Hawk 2X was actually ported by Treyarch. And what Treyarch did is they uh, did some Xbox exclusive tricks. Um, and you can see, I mean hardware tricks, not skateboard tricks. You can see my Tony Hawk 2 review I talked about a little bit. But they did um, like actual 3D grass instead of just a texture. They did um, like bump mapping and mo uh, motion blur and all kinds of stuff like that, uh, which is pretty cool. And then Tony Hawk 3 was kind of just a straight port uh, because it wasn't handled by Treyarch anymore. Never stopped it uh, themselves. So this level, I wonder if they meant to include this in the game and they just ran out of time or what happened. But uh, it's kind of cool. Kind of reminds me of the construction site in Tony Hawk 2X because that was a very vertical level. Um, but that was made by Treyarch. Well, I guess that's all there is to see. You know, I'm not going to try to do all the gaps or anything, so I don't really bother playing this level very much. Uh, let's go through and let's uh, check out the career. Okay, I already played through as Rodney Mullen, so I want to play as a vert guy so I can get the alternate challenges. Let's be Rune Glipberg, he's awesome. I think the way that they designed uh, the career mode is pretty cool. So in the first two games, they both started off in kind of an industrial level. So Tony Hawk 1 was the warehouse and Tony Hawk 2 was the hangar. And they're both kind of small, um, confined levels and this one they kind of did the same thing and I think they did that so that they can kind of slowly ease you into the new stuff so none of the challenges in this level would have been impossible on the PlayStation 1 they might have done it a little bit differently um, you know like having the guy that you can knock into the pool up there um, they might have had to do that a little differently and maybe the molten um, you know that thing over there that moves around with the tub that that pours out they might not have been able to do that but the style of challenges would have been the same and then they slowly ease you into the newer stuff like in the um, the airport where you have to stop the pickpockets and um, you got the tickets that can be voided by going through the um, through the security stuff I think it's it's pretty cool they slowly got you into the new stuff but uh, one of the reasons why I have to be a vert guy is because the challenges are different. So as a street skater, you have to 50-50 that one rail over there. Um, as a vert skater, you have to uh, do a cannonball over this. And I did it a little bit earlier. Uh, so that's one thing that's different. The positions of the skate letters are different as well, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, that Just that they went through that kind of effort. So. In this game, there's 
Yeah, there he is. In this game, there's sort of like 12 challenges per level. Uh, there's 10, but it's just that two have alternate locations. So Tony Hawk 1 had five challenges. Tony Hawk 2 has 10. Tony Hawk 3 has sort of 12. Um, and then 4 has uh, 21. Uh, kind of goes crazy. I already got the six score. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, man. I did pretty good, huh? I like this. Uh, the, the fact that you can just do your stats just like that. Very helpful. I would play all through Tony Hawk 2 without upgrading my stats ever because I hated backing out of the menu and having to reload everything. So that's pretty cool. You know, um, this game, I was just thinking about how Tony Hawk 4 was the first one that was actually difficult, had challenges that were really hard. Um, so I can go through this game, or Tony Hawk 2, and I can beat it really quickly because I know where everything is. Um, actually, do I have to do the nose grind as a vert skater? Let's find out. Um, I know where all this stuff is, and so, well, I guess not. And so the difficulty of finding stuff isn't there anymore. Um, but in Tony Hawk 4, there was stuff that's just really hard to do. Uh, there's one level where you have to do, Bob Burnquist wants you to do a this certain transfer. It's like, in, in the zoo, you have to do a transfer over a hippo, like the wall in the hippo... Um, uh, habitat or something like that and it's really hard even with full stats um, and that's the first time that that game this game actually gets challenging yeah impressing the skaters that's another pretty cool thing one thing I like about this game again as opposed to Tony Hawk 4 is that the new sort of interesting stuff that they do isn't overused so you have to impress these skaters here, and then at the cruise ship at the end, you impress the girls. Um, and then in Tony Hawk 4, the new stuff they did there, like doing the the tricks that pop up on screen and all that kind of stuff, um, they end up doing it over and over and over and over and over, and you get sick and tired of it. So like I said, there's 21 goals in all those levels, and um, a lot of them are going to be the same. But this game did not do that, so... I think this is definitely one of the better Tony Hawk games. I don't think I'll have time to do this. No. So what is the vert? Melon over the blade. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so that would be one of the difficult things. Like the first time you ever play this game, what is the blade? You know, and it's not difficult because it's actually hard to do. It's just difficult because you don't know what the heck that is. Let's just go to Rio. I think Tony Hawk 2 probably has the best level design, like the most classic levels of any Tony Hawk game. Um, Tony Hawk 3, it's definitely one of the better games. Uh, the career mode is just, it's really good, it's really tight, it doesn't waste a lot of time. Um, you're not repeating stuff, there's no story, you're not sitting through characters talking about stuff. Um, it just, it plays really well, and I like it, um, but I think one thing that they kind of kind of messed up on a little bit is the fact that most of the levels, not this one, but a lot of them are based on being able to um, have little set pieces, like things happen, you know, like in, in Los Angeles, having the earthquake. So they didn't design that to really be the best level, well, I guess there's a small example, where they didn't design it to just be the best looking level possible, and that dust texture is kind of messed up, they didn't design it to be the best possible level, they designed it to be the best experience, you know, um, of course you do most of your gameplay in career mode anyway, but in 2 I would spend a ton of time outside of the career mode just messing around and doing stuff, playing with cheats and, you know, that kind of thing. And this game isn't really designed for that quite as much. <laughs> I always like when this happens. I know in in Skate, 
they make you ride backwards sometimes. Like if you, the way you land, you can actually be like truly fakey. But it doesn't happen much in this one. So I, I do like, um, in this game, some of the secrets. So there aren't nearly as many, but for, over here, for example, you can go into this, this pool and you can get the deck. Um, but for me, I never really cared that much about the decks. And they never they never did that again, where you have to actually find them. In Tony Hawk 4, you buy them, um, and you don't find them anymore. So, I mean, it's kind of cool. Like, in Tony Hawk 2, they had all the secret areas and stuff. This one doesn't seem to do that quite as much. But there is still a lot of attention to detail. How'd I do... That's got to be good enough, right? Yeah. This was one of the ones, one of the first levels where things are really starting to get a little bit different. Um, so having the photographer, um, having the axe that you have to go find, um, you know, that's all new sorts of concepts. And I think they did a pretty good job with that. It all still feels like Tony Hawk. You know, they didn't really go too, too weird with anything yet. All right, let's go give it to this guy. I've seen people do weird speed runs where they can like glitch up into that and they don't even need to get the ax. And then as soon as they reach inside here, it just counts it. I mean, that's pretty crazy. I like the game, but I, I'm not gonna spend like hours and hours trying to figure out all these tiny little tricks. You know, one thing I noticed, oh, that was weird. One thing I, I've noticed with this game is that um, this is kind of the beginning of the point where real skateboard obstacles are useless. So, um, like in that little center, like in the, the cul-de-sac, these ramps are basically worthless. Like, there's nothing you can do on it that's worth any points, you know? And the games kind of get to a point, especially with four, I think, is the worst, where you're just grinding on top of buildings and stuff like that. There's there's stairs and handrails and other stuff. Man, I can't get that pumpkin. There's stairs and handrails and other stuff around, but you get nothing for skating them. They're pointless. There's no no point in doing that. Also, this is the last game where you can get away with never upgrading your uh, lip balance stat. In 4, they, they squeeze in a bunch of challenges where you have to do stalls while, you know, whatever the thing you're doing a stall on moves or whatever the point is. Let's see if I can squeeze out a six score. I don't think I got too much stuff this time. Yeah, okay. I also thought it was kind of weird at the time that this level has a, oh, I can, oh yeah, you can do that too. I forgot about that. Um, this level has a spine in it. Um, it's right over at the left side of the screen. There's that spine there. You can't actually skate it like a spine until four. Um, it's just kind of funny that they put it in there with no way to actually do anything on it. I wonder if they meant to put that in, but just couldn't get the gameplay balance right or something. All right, let's get these pickpockets. So this level, I know I, I usually hate all of the um, downhill style levels there we go. this one is kind of like that um, where there's really nowhere to go but forward and it's always leading in one direction uh, stupid guy. but in this case I don't really mind it for some reason I think this one's pretty cool although the security guards ser serve no purpose rather than to just be annoying Okay, last pickpocket is over here. You know, this game, 
Uh, this came out when I was first starting to skate. I skated, I started after Tony Hawk 2 came out, but I was still kind of learning the basics when this one came out. And at the end of the game, you can get um, some of the videos that you unlock are really, were really inspirational to me. So um, there's one where there's like a, dang it, there's like a kickflip challenge. And it's people from the team who worked on the game trying to do a kickflip. And n none of them skated. And so I saw these guys who had never, probably couldn't even ollie yet, trying to do kickflips and just seeing how close they got. And it made it seem a lot more attainable. And then there was a guy who does it. And I just thought that was really cool. Like, I could barely kickflip yet. And some guy just did it in an afternoon because, I don't remember, they bet like 100 bucks on it or whatever it was. I also remember one of the things, um, I started skating because of the Rodney Mullen video in Tony Hawk 2. Oh, you have to airwalk? Dang, I forgot what I have to do. Um, and so when this game came out, I beat it as Tony, as uh, Rodney Mullen and I got his video. And he does a thing where he, uh, he doesn't talk in it, he just like shows, there's something written on his hand, something written on his shirt. And I thought that he couldn't speak. I thought he must have like a speech disorder or something like that. And I thought that for the longest time. All right. So I have to airwalk over the escalator. Oh, dang it, I got the ticket. So how do I do that? Oh, the escalator, not the claim. That's right. You have to do a crooked grind around the baggage claim, but you airwalk over the escalator. That's right. There we go. Um, let's just start over. Get the ticket back. So what's your favorite level in Tony Hawk 3? I'm probably going to go with the cruise ship. Um, I always thought that was really cool because it's kind of like a bonus level but they clearly put a lot of effort into it because of all the challenges and all that kind of stuff so avoid him um, and I thought that one was pretty cool there we go <laughs> I give them their ticket and then they knock me over that's always funny but this level is also a lot of fun I remember for some reason I would try to do like serious like realistic style skating in the basement down there because there's these big boxes like these crates down there and they happen to be just the right size that you can barely ollie up onto it so it felt like it was sort of realistic size for the physics of this thing of this game I also like the tray flip the one in uh, Tony Hawk 2 Maybe 2x is, I think, the best one. This one, like, it kind of folds over itself, which is kind of weird, but when you spin with it, it looks pretty cool. Um, and then in 4 and up, it does the, you know, where you have to do a varial kickflip and hit flip twice. Um, and then it has to, like, kind of change directions in the air, and it never really looked good anymore. All right, I think that's enough. Yeah. Skater Island is also pretty cool. And again, this is one of the last skate parks in the game where you can actually skate the obstacles designed for skateboarding. So you can get up in the rafters and all that kind of stuff, but you can do a whole run without doing anything stupid, you know. I mean, you're doing ridiculous combos, but you're still actually skating things a real person would skate. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so to unlock the secret area, man, I actually better just get some points here. But to unlock the secret area, you have to grind the pirate flag over there. See if I can get there.
I really like the uh, the inward heel flip in this game. It, it just looks really good. Oh, I ran out of time. It's just a really nice one. Like in Tony Hawk 2, if you did a Nolly inward heel flip, um, it would just do a regular inward heel after you nollied. It was kind of lame. I don't know if they ran out of space for animation or if they just skipped it or something. There we go. I also think this game is sort of on the limit of the weird humor that these guys would have. Um, so it would do do stuff like that where it's got stuff popping up on the screen and all that. But it's not so ridiculous as the next few games. I've been playing Tony Hawk 4 a little bit lately. I like to play a couple at the same time um, as I record footage for reviews just so I can compare them. And um, it's got, like, in the first level, the college, there's, like, a, a drunk guy, and he's hallucinating, and you need to collect all of his hallucinations in one combo, you know? It's just, like, really stupid stuff. This one is still actually about skateboarding, for the most part. How'd I do? Man. That's still enough, right? Yeah. Yeah, I forget all of the street or the uh, the vert goals because I always played as the street guys. I don't even know what one foot Japan is. Wrap around. It's one of the angle ones, right? Yeah. Okay. Tony Hawk 3 is the first Tony Hawk game that has ped props. So you do tricks by a person, and if they're impressed enough, it gives you a little bonus. I think they dropped that from the later games. I don't think that happens in 4. All right, let's get these earthquake rails. Again, just another sort of cryptic goal. What is an earthquake rail? You know, there's nothing that really sets them apart. Uh, let's see, did I get this one yet? No, okay. I gotta say, this game looks really nice on the Xbox. Although it doesn't have the effects and things, um, it's still really clean looking. The textures are all higher resolution than the PlayStation 2 version. Um, it's definitely the way to go. And what do I have time for here? Uh, oh, this place right here. So I was so confused. See how there's actually 3D modeled stuff in there? Um, when I first got this game, I had it on the PlayStation 2 at the time. This was um, one of the first games I had on it. And on the PlayStation 1, if there was ever something 3D modeled, you knew that you could go there because um, they wouldn't bother wasting their their polygon count on stuff that was just decoration. So um, when I first saw that little store, the convenience store, whatever, I was sure that I could get in there, and I tried and tried and tried to hit it from different angles, and like, what do I have to unlock to get over in there? And of course, you can't actually get in there. They just put that much attention to detail into it. I didn't do too much, did I? Okay, let's do skate and tape. Okay. I think the uh, the street goal for this level is to do a, a varial kickflip from this handrail to another handrail, and it's actually really hard. What you, got? No. Um, you get kind of a, a freebie with this, the vert version. Let's see it. Not gonna... All right, so. Oh, one thing that you'll definitely want to check out on, on my full review, I played the original PlayStation version, and it is actually really good. I was shocked at how good it was. Um, so, it was developed by the team that did um, Grind Session, and on my review of Grind Session, someone commented and said that uh, that developer made Tony Hawk 3, and that's why it was so good. And so I never actually played it. I had it on my shelf just to have it. Um, 
but I played it and they actually did a lot of stuff differently. A lot of the levels are like remixed, um, probably because of system uh, limitations, but there's a lot of different stuff. Like in Canada, you can go past the fences and go to different stuff. They make like a little town is in the level two. Um, this level is actually, is it, I think it in the airport switch places in the career, uh, which is kind of weird. But they do a bunch of different stuff in it, and it is really, really cool. Um, so check out my review. I was going to do a little bit of gameplay of that too, but I don't want this video to be too long. So, what is the goal? Is it 300 or 500? We'll find out. So one new thing in this game is the, um, the hidden combos, it calls it. So you can do like a 360 shove it by hitting square twice. And they kind of, I think it's at kind of a cool level right now where there's only a few things that do it. But then in Tony Hawk 4, what did I miss? Oh, it was 400,000. Um, but in Tony Hawk 4, you can do it with pretty much anything. So you can do a triple impossible and a 360 hard flip and 360 inward heel flip and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I didn't like that too much because you could do it with anything. So you didn't have to know the trick. You didn't have to realize that this trick could be doubled. You know, like you can just double anything. So this is definitely one of my favorite in the series. I don't think it's any better than Tony Hawk 2, but that might just be because that game was so important to me. You know, got me started in skating and everything. I actually started skating pretty much immediately after Tony Hawk 2 because I um, played it at a friend's house and he already skated, so he had a skateboard and we just, like, started. Alright. Let's see how I do. Don't have too much time left today. One thing about the Xbox version that you have to get used to if you decide to pick it up is to do a, a, a revert, you can hit the trigger, but the trigger also spins. So you might spin at the last second. Now the alternate control for that is hitting the black button. Um, and that's a little bit out of the way, but if you can get used to that, it, it works out pretty well. You can't really beat the PS2 controller though. All right. You know, there's a lot of hidden spots in this level as well. Like, if you do a wall ride, um, not on this side, on the other side of the level, there's like a hidden park, like a hidden skate park up there, which is pretty cool, but it's kind of not the right level to have that in because you don't really have time um, in a contest run to try to get up there. You know, you're doing a lot of just long wall rides and trying to work your way up there and not getting points, so... If you ever free skate this level, um, it's like, let me see if I can show you, like up there, above that blinking sign up there, you can get up there and skate that. Uh, it's pretty cool, just having all that hidden stuff. Alright, so let's see. Oh. Alright, how'd I do? I remember this contest being really hard back in the day for some reason. Okay, cool. Let's see. Time to hit up the cruise ship, impress some girls. Yeah, let's not watch this video. One thing I really liked about Rune Glyphberg is the fact that he was doing regular flip tricks on Vert. So one of the things he would always do, I remember in every contest run, um, is that he would he would try a, a kickflip back lip, and he wouldn't always land it. It was like one of his throw, like if the run was doing pretty bad, he would try to throw one in there to save it. But, um, man, I didn't get in a fight. But he was always doing that kind of stuff. There's him in um, uh, Tas Papas. Is that his name? 
he he had a video part he's doing like 360 flips with no grab um, on on vert and I always thought that was really cool okay invert there we go so <laughs> I did say you don't have to do any lip tricks but what I meant is that you don't have to hold it out for any kind of time. Did that count? Something else I used to do is I would skate this and just do tricks over this pool. It must have counted. I wasn't paying attention. Okay. Oops. <laughs> that was weird. Come on. Okay, so I have to do that. To invert the, I don't have to do the nose blunt, I don't think. Alright. So this game was the first one to put um, freestyle tricks in there, but it did it in a kind of weird way. I don't really get into it in the review, but I, uh, like, you have to have a freestyle trick as a special trick, and then you can kind of build off of it, um, which was a little bit weird. Yeah, five seconds left. So you can do, like, uh, primo slides and stuff in the game. I made a video about primo slides and how people use the name wrong. Um, and I used some footage from this game in that. Okay, skate. Fairy girls. Okay. This game is full of little things. Like if you, you can knock down that cake and it'll always pull up a different one. And then the gap name will change based on the kind of cake that you just destroyed. Dang it, I gotta impress that girl over there. Something I've likely said in real life before. Alright, cool. Okay. Okay. The A is up there. Okay. Again, this would be a good spot to um, have an actual spine transfer in the game. They made these kind of less than vert. Dang it. They made these kind of less than vert, so it treats... Uh, it acts more like a kicker. Come on. You restarted me way too far away. Man. Is that not update my stats enough or something. What is wrong with it? What the? Uh, come on, come on. Hey, what did you do time. Okay. I got that. There's a girl up here. Okay. They're not too hard to impress. Just gotta find them. There's this one... Dang it. Right on. Oh, I'm not gonna get it. Dang it. So there's the one over here, but then there's the one all the way by the pool. I don't think I can get a combo all the way up there. Nope. That sucked. It would be cool to try to impress them all in a line. Just do one crazy line and then it goes from zero to seven. It'd be pretty cool. All right, let's do this. But yeah, as I was saying, there's nothing too hard in this, in this game. Although this is the last level and I clearly didn't spend too much time trying to find stats and stuff. Um, like the six score and all that, not really a big deal. Of 
course, I have been playing this game for a few years. Well, this is going to have to call it. I'm going to have to call it for this video. Um, I've beaten every level, surprisingly. I was able to get all that done pretty quickly. Um, hang on for my review. Be sure to check that out so you can see the PlayStation version at least. Uh, because that was pretty awesome. I'm happy I was able to get a chance to play that. That should be going up soon. I'm not sure when, what day I'm going to be posting this in relation to the video, the full review, but just stay tuned and that'll be up soon. Uh, let me know what your favorite level in Tony Hawk 3 is, and if you agree with me that the level design uh, isn't quite the best in this one. But that's it for this time. Uh, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.